In this video, I'm gonna show you 35 of my favorite Procreate shortcuts and gestures. I use these on a daily basis, and you may be familiar with some of them, but I'm hoping there'll be some really fun surprises in there too. For example, there's a really useful shortcut for switching between layers without even opening the layers panel. And hi, by the way, my name is Brooke Glazer and I'm a professional illustrator. You can find my work in places like Target and on things like kids apparel, greeting cards, gift wrap, and more. I'm also a top teacher on Skillshare and I've helped over 100,000 artists level up both their art and their creative careers. So let's get into the shortcuts. Toggle between light and dark mode by hitting the wrench icon, the preference tab, and toggling light interface on or off. Use two apps at the same time by tapping the three buttons at the top of the toolbar, tapping the center button, and choosing whichever app you'd like to reference. You can use both apps at the same time, and if you want to resize it, grab the middle gray bar and slide the two apps to the side. Slide it all the way off screen to exit one of the apps. You can insert a private photo that won't show up in time lapses by going to the wrench icon, add, and instead of hitting insert a photo, swipe to the right, tap insert a photo, and add your image. This image is private and it will not show up in your time lapses. Tap on the letter N to access the opacity and lower it so that it's easier to trace your image. Want to hide the interface and toolbars? Use four fingers and tap on the screen to go into full screen drawing mode. Tap four fingers to bring it back. Use a two finger pinch to make the artwork fit your full screen. Working on close up details and want to see the impact on the full screen without having to zoom in and out and in and out, go to the wrench icon, the canvas tab, and tap the reference button. Now you can have a full reference of your image while you work on the close-ups and you can reference each at a glance. You probably already know that you can undo and redo by tapping two and three fingers, but if you tap and hold two fingers, it will rapidly undo a bunch of moves that you've made in one touch. And the same if you hold three fingers, it will rapidly redo all of those steps with one touch. You can adjust this by going to the wrench icon, the preference tab, and you see this slider down here that says rapid undo delay. Sliding this will control how fast that happens or how long you have to hold your fingers down before that rapid undo kicks into gear. Alternatively, I've made all of these strokes on a single layer and if I just take three fingers and I wiggle them back and forth, I can clear the entire layer in one move. Not very good at drawing a perfect square? That's okay. If you draw and hold a square, it'll snap into quick shape. And if you tap one finger down, it'll make a perfect square. You can do the same thing with circles and even triangles. When you release your shape, you can tap edit shape at the top of the toolbar and you can choose different options for your shape. You can also come in and actually customize your shape by grabbing the different nodes here to make exactly the shape that you'd like. Sometimes you want to erase with the same texture that you've been drawing with. So if you tap and hold the eraser button, it'll grab the brush that you were just using and now you can erase with the same texture. This is a lot better because sometimes you'll be drawing with a brush and then you come into the eraser and you try and erase it and it just, it just doesn't match. This is a really useful shortcut. Want to paint in 3D but don't have an Apple Pencil? No problem. Tap the wrench icon, go to the preference tab and tap gesture controls. In the general settings, there's an option to enable 3D painting with your finger. Now you can paint with your finger. If you want to move the model, you'll have to hold onto the modify button in between the sliders here, and now you can move the object as normal. You can adjust the placement of the brush and opacity sliders by swiping out and then dragging up and down to put it in the spot that makes the most sense for you. Left-handed, swap to the opposite side by going to the wrench icon, the preference tab and toggling the right hand interface. And now it's on the opposite side. Instead of duplicating the same brush to have multiple different sizes, you can save the sizes of the brush on the slider itself. Tap on the slider and then hit the plus icon. Tap it again and you can add a new size. Now you can swap sizes with simply the tap of a button. You can also do the same with the opacity slider. You can also create unique settings for the same brush in both the smudge and eraser modes. 
Layers are the most powerful part of working digitally, but when you use lots of them, it can be hard to see what you're working on. Here's some tips to help with that. You can turn the visibility of a layer on and off by tapping this check mark, but if you tap and hold the check mark, it will hide all of the other layers. Tap and hold to turn them back on. Sometimes you have so many layers, it's hard to find the one that you want to work on. Well, there's a really cool shortcut for this. Go to the wrench icon, the preference tab, and tap gesture controls. There's a setting here called layer select, and I'm going to choose square plus apple pencil. You can choose whatever makes sense for you. I'll hit done. Now, if I hold this button between the two sliders and I tap my apple pencil onto the screen, it's gonna pull up the option to choose between the flower, the plate underneath of it, or the background texture that I drew. Now that I've selected the plate, I'll be able to draw directly on it. Let's say I'd like to move both of these flowers, but they are on four separate layers, including the centers. Well, if I swipe right on each of these layers, now I can move all of them at the same time. Let's say I don't want them to be on separate layers. I can take two fingers and I can pinch them together to merge them into a single layer. Let's say I'd like to use these flowers in another canvas. I'm gonna swipe right on all the layers I wanna use, grab them with my finger, tap the gallery, choose the canvas I'd like to add them to, open the layers panel and drop them in there. Now I've got them in a new canvas and I can reuse them. I want this steam to be more faint. If I go to the layers panel and I tap on N, I can slide the opacity and make it more faint. Or I can take two fingers and tap on the layer and it'll pull up the opacity slider up here. And now I can use my finger to slide across the screen and choose how faint I'd like this to be. Sometimes it's hard to draw inside of the lines, like on the rim of this cup. But if I use two fingers on this layer and swipe to the right, I'll turn on alpha lock and now I won't be able to draw outside of the lines, and I can make a nice highlight on the rim of my cup. Procreate can automatically create a palette for you. Tap the color circle, choose the palette tab, tap the plus icon at the top, choose new from photo, choose your photo, and Procreate will automatically create a palette for you. Don't like Procreate's automatic version? You can choose your own colors with the eyedropper. Tap and hold your finger on the color you'd like to select, and then you can draw with it. You can expand the color disc with two fingers for better control of color choosing. Double tap to choose pure colors. Want to quickly swap between two different colors? Tap and hold the color circle and it'll swap between the last two colors that you used. Miss the recolor feature? Drag and drop the color circle onto the area you'd like to change, then tap continue coloring with recolor at the top of the toolbar. Drag that crosshatch onto the area you'd like to recolor, and now you can play with as many different versions of color as you'd like. You can tap in a new area to make new color changes. Quickly color in a selection by turning on the color tool option. When you tap to close the selection, it'll fill it with color. You can make a second selection, and you can choose different versions of color. Tap the feather option, to create a soft glow. Want to quickly select everything on a layer? Tap and hold two fingers on that layer, and then it will select all of the objects on that layer. Sometimes I find these bars to be a bit distracting though. Tap on the wrench icon, the preference tab, and you can adjust visibility of those selection bars. That's a lot easier to see. I wanna remove these lemons and put them on their own layer. I'm gonna make a selection of the lemons, and then I'm gonna use three fingers to swipe downwards. This opens the copy and paste menu. There's lots of great options in here, but the cut and paste option will remove your selection and put it on its own new layer. Working on a pattern and need to rotate something by a specific amount, if you tap on the green node, you can select the exact angle you'd like to rotate an object by. Tapping on one of these blue nodes allows you to adjust the exact pixel size of your selection. This yellow node is the bounding box and you can rotate it to adjust where your selection lies. Notice how in the original selection, when I try to make the rocket wider, it kind of skews it. Whereas if I adjust the bounding box so that this side of the selection is even with the rocket, when I expand it, it looks much more natural. 
Want some guides to help you line up your objects perfectly? Turn on snapping. Snapping will create guides that suggest good alignment. Blue lines suggest alignment with different objects on your canvas, where orange lines suggest alignment with the canvas itself. This shows the dead center of the canvas. Want to get a quick up-close look of your art in the gallery? Pinch two fingers outwards and you can preview the art. Swiping to the left or the right will allow you to look at different canvases in the gallery. If you double tap on a canvas, it'll open it up and you can actually edit it. If you're new to Procreate and you'd like to learn more, I highly encourage you to check out my popular Intro to Procreate class. I walk you through everything that you need to know in a fun, accessible way. You can watch it on Skillshare and there's a link in the description of this video to a free one month trial. Or if subscriptions aren't your thing, you can also get it via my website for a one-time purchase. If you've got a friend who just got a new iPad, you can even gift the class to them. Let me know in the comments, what's your favorite Procreate gesture, whether I covered it here or not. I hope this video was helpful. Thank you for spending your time with me and happy creating.